Hey everyone, hope you are doing well. Um, it is cold outside. Now I know some of you get snow all the time, but for us Texans it's kind of a big deal, so I've been enjoying it, of course. Okay, today let's talk about sources, sources of information. Historians, based on what they do, writing about what happened, have to kind of sift through sources, sources of information. Maybe you find some writing at the base of a statue, or you find a book, or you find even an eyewitness testimony if the event is recent enough. That's a source of information, but you run into a problem very quickly. What if sources disagree with each other, right? You're studying the Crusades and there's one uh, Western Christian book, but there's also a Eastern Islamic book and they're contradicting each other. Um, you run into different claims here or there. How do you tell if a source is accurate or truthful? Um, so that's a really important skill for historians to have, but hopefully you can tell how important that would be in real life. You see an article uh, shared through social media. Your uncle says something at the uh, Thanksgiving table. You hear all these different kind of um, sources of information. How do you know which one's telling the truth? This would be called source criticism. Uh, this kind of tool or adventure of trying to discern what source is more accurate. So I'll tell you right off the bat, even if you're not trained in any research methodologies, one of the very first things you can do is just Google the name of the person who is providing the information. If it's a book, Google the name of the author. Um, look them up, see if there's anything weird going on. Um, I want to give you three examples right now of mainstream books that, in my opinion, shouldn't have been so mainstream <laughs> uh, and wouldn't have, I think, if people have just done, people would have done some basic source criticism and investigated the author. So here we go, example number one, Healing Spices. Let's take a look. How to use 50 everyday and exotic spices to boost health and beat disease. Whoa. It's written by... Oh. There's my dryer. It's written by Bharat B. Agarwal. He has a PhD, too. He must know what he's talking about. Let's look at the Amazon reviews, shall we? Wow, the Spice Bible. Wonderful book. I can't say enough about this book. It helped save my life. An excellent resource. Well, let's Google the author. Bharat B. Agarwal, here's his Wikipedia page. In 2012, MD Anderson launched a review of Agarwal's research after the federal government notified them of allegations of fraud by academic whistleblowers. In as many as 65 of Agarwal's published papers, with the allegations involving images that have been reused and manipulated to represent different results. As of 2021, 29 papers published by Agarwal have been retracted 10 others have received an expression of concern and 17 others have been corrected. So there you go. I saw this book everywhere when it first came out. I saw it in Barnes and Noble. I saw it in um, various bookstores. It's actually a really nice looking book. Like it's hardcover. It's got this nice orange glow to it, whatever. So it looks sharp and people just assume, oh, cool, you know, science and plants and stuff. But if you take a second to Google this guy's name, boom. Um, he falsified a ton of his research. Uh, I think it's co-authored by someone? Mm, let me see here. Yeah, I think it's also co-authored by someone, so I don't know about Deborah Yost. Um, or Deborah Yost. Maybe she's on the level. Sorry, Deborah, that you got, that you got, uh, pulled into this. But, um, as far as the doctor who's supposed to be behind this, Agarwal, Agarwal, Sorry. Yeah, he falsified a ton of his research finding. So there you go. Do you want to go through a book where someone's just making stuff up? Um, and who knows, you might find like one or two nuggets in there that are actually true, but do you want to have to sift through all that? Um, and how are you going to even tell what's true and what's not in there? So it's a bad source. What can I say? And there you go. We looked up the, the author and... 
our, um, we didn't even have to have any like uh, advanced research techniques to do that. Just check out the author. Um, okay, next. Oh my gosh, this next one. Hitler's War. You're browsing through. Uh, you're browsing through the used bookstore, and you see a book on World War Two. World War Two, Hitler's War, and you're like, "Wow, the war through Hitler's eyes." Uh, this should be interesting, you know, telling his perspective and everything about what happened, his plans. Let's check some Amazon reviews. Very interesting behind the scene details. Amazing historical perspective. Five stars, five stars, five stars. More complete information about Hitler in World War II than you find anywhere else. An excellent read. Um, but before you buy the book, you remember... Remember how uh, you were burned with that last book, that health book, the spice book? We don't want to be like little Timmy and just be all swept away. And like, oh, wow, it's so amazing. So we Google the author. Guess what? David Irving is a Holocaust denier. <laughs> so despite all the mountains of evidence, like all the tons of documents and pictures and like train schedules and everything, uh... He denies that a huge part of World War II ever even happened. And don't you think that's going to color the way he writes his World War II books? Yeah. Huge problem there denying uh, history. So yeah, that's definitely a no for that source as well. Boom. And all we did was look up the author. All right. Um, this last one. I don't know if I'd necessarily say that the author lied. I think our first two authors can definitely be accused of being dishonest. But um, this last one, eh, it's a weird one. 1421, the year China discovered America. This was a New York Times bestseller. I remember seeing this everywhere on in bookstores. I'll bet you can still find it in bookstores. Okay. 1421, the year China discovered America. We Google the author. Guess who Gavin Menzies is? A submarine captain? Let's see. Let's see his actual rank. A submarine lieutenant commander. Oh. So he was on a submarine in the armed forces. He doesn't have any training in history, so he's not going to have, like the tools or the skill set to navigate through historical sources and interpret them accordingly. Um, this is someone who basically just sailed the submarine route and then he was like, you know what? I'll bet the ancient Chinese could have done this. They probably discovered America. He wrote a book about it. He sold over a million despite having no training in the language, no training in the historical sources. If you like go to a university or whatever or people who have actual training in this stuff like they know Chinese or the sources like actual sinologists they like laugh at this guy this is totally regarded as historical fiction it's not um, there's nowhere in any sources that indicate that this actually happened it's basically entertainment like historical writing for fun this guy isn't a historian um, yeah so that's three basic examples so that's three basic examples of just taking a quick look at the authors and finding different problems. Maybe they falsify studies. Maybe they just deny history. Um, or maybe they have no training and no business writing um, anything about this, the topic at hand. Um, so source criticism. This is a really important topic for religion, politics, uh, whenever you start digging into various sources of information, how do you know what's true? Well, one thing you can at least do, even if you don't have any training, is look into the author. See what their training is like. See what their political slants are. What what are potential bias problems for the author? Um, and, you know, maybe you look into it and you find good things. I'm not trying to be negative. When we're critiquing something, we're just examining something. Like... You want to be skeptical, as in you want to be asking questions, but that's different from being cynical, as in hoping to find something's wrong, right? 
you don't have to hope that something is uh, wrong, but you can at least look. And who knows, maybe you find good stuff. Maybe you look up the author and you're like, wow, you know, this woman's like been published a billion times. She's an expert in her field. This book's gonna be awesome. Maybe you look up stuff and you find bad stuff, who knows? But at least be aware of where your information's coming from. Um, if the person has been caught falsifying stuff or they have no training in their field, it's probably a good sign that you wanna steer clear of their work. Um, I've had people contact me and be like, oh, you should check out, you know, my, <laughs> my sensei Bob wrote a book about the true evolution of martial arts in China. It's like, okay. Uh, and he self-published it in on Amazon. Okay. Does he speak Chinese? No. You know, um, what what research methodology is he using? Uh. So, there you go. Uh, I'll never forget in one of my classes one time, my professor saw uh, my professor came in, and he he's he's like, did you all do that assigned reading such and such author? And we were all like, yeah. And he's like, now so-and-so, the author, the author thinks that such and such it happened, but you know, whatever. And then he just starts writing all this stuff up on the board and kind of picking through the author's argument. And you know, I was a little Timmy back then. That was one of my first classes. And I was like, oh, you know, you can do that. I, I think in my child brain, um, if someone wrote a book on something, they were an expert. But as we've shown today, that is just not the case. Um, sources will vary in quality. You know, maybe, maybe they're not the best source in the world, but you still get a nugget or two out of them. Maybe they're ama an amazing source. Maybe they're a horrible source. So anywhere in between, right? But you have to at least know something about the author um, before you go in. So, I hope that the next time a claim is made in your life, whether it's something about any topic history, human behavior, philosophy, religion, politics, anything, that instead of just believing it, I hope you investigate the source and see the quality of where that information is coming from. Anything, it can be, it doesn't have to be an ancient scroll, right? It can be literally a uh, web article that was written yesterday. And so many things are gonna influence the quality of that source, right? Uh, everything from the time the author was alive to their own personal circumstances or training. I'd like to do more on this kind of topic, how to do research, how to evaluate sources, source criticism. Um, if that's something you'd like to see, let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching this. I probably could have done a better job like turning it into a lecture or whatever. I'm kind of just speaking, you know, extemporaneously, but um, I think it's really important. It's a really important topic. I think if people investigated the sources before they shared and ranted, this world would be a very different place. So hopefully this little bit helps. I'll try and be better at it myself. I still have a lot to learn myself. Until then, stay warm, I'll say. I said stay warm to a friend in Australia the other day, and uh, they said that it was already warm. There was like a heat wave going on over there in different seasons. So. Wherever you are, stay comfy, I guess. I'll go with that. Thank you.